Hey, welcome along to another screencast from your friends at raywendlick.com. My name is Sam and today I'm going to investigate using Swift for scripts. I'm going to start by typing Swift out of the command line and that will start a REPL, a read, evaluate, print loop. Every line that I type in here gets read by Swift, it gets compiled, evaluated and then the result is printed like that and then it'll loop over each line I type in. Colon Q will get me out of the Swift REPL. Before I move on, I just want to check the version. You can see here I've got the Swift version 3.1, but I've got a beta of Xcode 9 installed which has Swift 4 in it. Now you can use this tool Xcode Select, you may have heard of that, and that will permanently change which version of Xcode is providing your command line tools. But here I only want to change this temporarily, so I can use this developer dir environment variable setting it to the location of my Xcode 9 beta. If I export that, I'll be using Swift 4 for the entirety of this session, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to create a new file, hello.swift, and in here I'm going to put the same line again, print hello. If I now jump back to the command line, I can run that as a script by typing swift hello.swift, and you can see it runs it again. No compilation necessary, it all happens behind the scenes. To take this one stage further, I can tell the system how to execute this without having to provide the Swift command line at the point I want to run it. And I do that with this hash bang. That's standard in the world of scripting. It's a hash exclamation mark slash USR slash bin slash n Swift. And that tells the system, go and find the Swift executable in your environment. I then need to make the hello Swift executable, which I do with chmod plus x hello Swift. And you can see that then if I do dot slash hello Swift, it executes it for me, exactly the same way as it would with any other script. Printing out hello is a really simple script, but you've got the entire power of Swift behind you. I've started working on a password generator script so that I can specify I want a pseudo random password of a certain length and my script will go off and generate that for me. I now need to look at how I can complete that using all of the features that are available to me. Within my password generator.swift file, I've written a load of Swift that I will be using to generate passwords. And I've been using structs and protocols and all of the kind of things that you'd expect to use. Here I've got a struct pseudo random password generator and there's a generate function that currently doesn't do anything. I'm going to implement that and we can see that you can just use any old bits of Swift that you want. So here's a private func generate single and it's going to return a string. The generate method returns a list of password suggestions. A generate single in this struct is just going to return a single password. First of all, I'm going to grab an array of characters that can be used to generate the password. That's all to do with the usable characters option set that I've created right at the top of this file. And then I'm just going to loop through to make the length of the password, extracting a random character from that character array at each turn. Notice here I'm using the arc for random uniform function which is not part of the Swift standard library. And then finally I'm going to return that as a string. Then back to the generate method, I need to make sure that I generate enough passwords using this generate single method. I'm going to do that using a map function. I'm going to implement the Safari password generator later, so for now I'm just going to return an empty array. And then right down at the bottom of the file, I'm going to write a little something so that we can actually see that this is working. So I'm going to create an instance of my pseudo random password generator. I'm going to say that I want passwords of length 12. And then I just need to call the generate function and I'm going to do a little bit of magic here so that if we have a list of passwords they get printed out one per line. Now jumping to the command line I'm going to execute that as a script. I notice that I've got a problem that the arc for random uniform function is not available and that's because it's not part of the Swift standard library, so I need to import a module that contains it. And I happen to know that that's in Darwin. If you were writing on Linux, you'd have to use a different set of random functions, and they wouldn't be part of Darwin. Now if I run that, I can see that I've generated a random password of length 12, as requested. Now that I've got that, I can fill in the Safari password generator. This will make the style of passwords that are default suggestions by Safari when you're browsing the web. To do this I'm going to use a pseudo random generator of length 3 using the standard alphanumeric character set and for each password I'm going to generate four trios of random digits and join them together with a dash. Now I've done that I can switch out the pseudo random password generator for the Safari password generator and I put a count in of 10. 
and run that again from the command line and you can see that that works as expected. As you've used command line tools and scripts in the past, you'll be aware that you quite often control exactly what they do using command line arguments. At the moment, in order to change what my password generator script does, I have to go and change the code. I'm going to take a look at how I can get hold of any arguments that are passed on the command line, and then take a look at building a really simple command line argument parser. I'm going to start by using the dump command to take a look at the arguments property on command line jump back to the shell and run password generator.swift again, this time passing in some arguments as you normally would in a script. You can see the arguments array has three elements. The first element is always the name of the script that's been executed. That is standard across all applications on the system. Following that are the two space delimited arguments. So back in the code, I can use that array to do a really simple command line argument parser. First, I'm going to set up the default properties. So I'm going to set this default count to be one. So we generate one password by default. I'm going to have a default length of 15. And by default, not going to use a Safari generator. We've only got two generators, so I can use a Boolean. Then I'm going to loop through the command line arguments. And I'm going to see what does each argument start with. So the first one, does it start with dash dash length equals? If it does, then I'm going to try and extract the remainder of that argument as an integer. And if I can't, then we'll just go with the, the default length. Same again with count, so dash dash count equals. If it does start with dash dash count equals, then I'm going to try and extract that as an integer. And again, if I can't, I'll use the default value of count. And then finally, if the argument is equal to Safari, slightly different style of argument here, then I'm going to change the Safari generator value from false to true. Now that I've set those, so I've got the default values, I've tried to manipulate them based on what the user has provided at the command line. And now finally I can use them to actually generate the passwords that I need to. I'm going to change the generator from a Safari one to a random string generator, which is the protocol that both of these password generators that I've got adopt. If it's a Safari generator, then my generator will be a Safari password generator, and I'll input the count value. Length doesn't make any sense for the Safari one. And then if it's not a Safari one, I'm going to use the pseudo random password generator with the length of length and a count of count. Once again, I'll just print out the results. I can jump back and try that. Ah, I've got a load of problems. The first problem I'm going to fix is that the value of string has no member substring. And that's because that's not part of the string type in the Swift standard library. It's actually part of foundation. So I'm going to switch the input of Darwin for the input of foundation, which has these extra features in. I'm going to try and run that again. And now I've got a problem that this let generator should be a type reference, not equals. So if I switch that round to be a colon instead of an equals, and then run it again, and you can see I'm now able to use my password generator with these different command line arguments to generate all manner of different passwords. And with that, I've got a password generator script that I can control from the command line written in everybody's favorite programming language. There's still quite a lot that I can do with this. In fact, I'm starting to get anxiety twitches at the length of this file. Can I pull out some of that code and use it in different Swift files? Well, maybe. And in a future screencast, I might well take a look at how I can do that. Keep an eye out for that. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you again later. Bye-bye.